Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while since the last time I posted a video. Today I have a follow-up to the video that I posted back in February where I took you guys along through my entire planning process for a painting. And in today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I painted this illustration that I've affectionately named Happy Mess and share with you guys all the stories behind it, all the struggles that I had, um, all the successes that I've had in between, and why I wanted to give up on it and then why I didn't. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I think one of the biggest challenges that I faced going into the piece was that I just didn't know where to begin to start painting because there's just so many elements that I had to juggle and it, it was a little overwhelming to try and figure out everything that needed to be done and in what steps was the ideal way to do them. So I started painting by how I usually like to start my gouache paintings, which is to use gouache like watercolor and lay very thin washes. So at first I started laying down very thin washes of color to tint the paper so that it knocks out some of the white of the paper and I am mapping out where I think the color should go in the piece. And I start moving on to painting the individual objects and that is kind of where I made my first mistake. And that mistake was putting down thicker layers of gouache a little too prematurely, which made it really difficult for me to continue working in my typical method when I am doing a gouache painting of using a lot of layers. You can probably see the difference in the lighter washes and the slightly thicker mixtures. I was trying to knock out a lot of the white of the paper by laying the local colors down of each object. So I am painting in sections. I'm painting one thing at a time, mixing, trying to mix the right color for that object. So my gouache consistency was all over the place from the get-go, which meant I really couldn't use it like watercolor anymore because if I do a sweeping light wash all over an area wanting to tint it a certain color, a certain value, um, that meant that the area that I had laid down a little bit thicker, that was going to lift up and then just mess up everything. How I paint is in a lot of layers. I build up my painting uh, slowly over time. I try a little bit of this and if that's not right, I pull a little back. So working in layers is a crucial part of my process and I set myself up for failure when I went in with gouache in a way where it made it very difficult for me to paint. I was painting in sections and in parts. I was just painting this one thing here and one little thing over there but not really seeing the entire painting as a whole which made everything look very disjointed. I feel like this is a type of painting that really would have benefited from an underpainting approach. And in hindsight, I think that would have helped a lot because if I do an underpainting, then all I had to really worry about was my values. And then I can tint the colors later on and then go from there. So it's just like one thing to worry at a time, as opposed to what I ended up doing, which was basically building every little object up separately and then hoping in the end that it all fits in together. Basically, if I were working on Photoshop, um, if I had zoomed in on this tiny little insignificant portion of the painting, and then when I zoom out, it just looks so out of place because I wasn't taking into consideration the entire image when I was painting that tiny little section. And at this point, the painting doesn't look so hot. I mean, it is quite early on and using gouache in a very thin way like watercolor, it does leave that kind of splotchy texture that, that is very unappealing. But I hope you can see what I mean about the disjointed look. Because I am just kind of giving a little bit more attention to individual objects kind of all over the piece, it looks too contrasty early on in this stage. I had no idea what color the wall was going to be. I think all I knew was that I wanted blue, like a turquoisey kind of blue 
the idea that I had for the wall is that it kind of becomes like the night sky um, towards the top and I plan to do some kind of fairy light sparkles to represent stars. So that was the idea behind it. I really struggled painting the cat's face and because I actually go back and try to repaint it over and over again, the gouache got so thick by the end that it was like thick enough to cast a shadow onto my painting, which is not the effect I wanted. So I, um, at one point, I'm not sure I filmed this, but at one point I actually take some water and then I just basically wipe his face off clean and repaint it because that's easier than trying to add another thick layer of gouache on top of already very chunky gouache and not only did I have to do this with a cat but I had to do this with the dolls on top of the shelf in the background because I ended up overworking that too by trying to fix it and get it to how I like it so if I could draw like a pie chart of how much time I spent on the dolls, especially the elephant on top of the shelf, and then the cat's face, it would be like they would take up at least 75% of that pie chart. That's how I spent my time painting this piece. Despite all my frustrations with this piece, um, I'm really enjoying now watching back on the time lapse of the girl's face being painted. I find it looks very satisfying. She just looks like a little jelly bean. I really like her pose. I like her expression. Painting faces usually is my favorite part of painting. Not when it goes wrong, but when it goes right, it's my favorite. And I definitely had a lot of fun with her. So at this point, the painting looked pretty good. It was, you know, getting there. I was able to fill out most of it out and knock out a lot of the white. And when I took a step back from the piece and assessed it overall, I realized um, what really needed to come through was that sense of magic. So I went in with this really light yellowish green color to represent that magical glow because that color isn't really in the rest of the piece. So it feels special and it stands out. So after a few days of putting a lot of hours into this piece, I was pretty fed up with fighting the medium. I felt like I was doing a lot but not seeing a lot of results. I was probably super um, fixated on how much I hated how the cat looked and how the dolls on top of the shelf, especially the elephant, how that area looked so muddy, so textured. And the colors were not really jiving together, I felt, and it looked a little bit garish and I, I just wasn't feeling it. And the thing that made everything worse was that I had to take a two week break from the painting because I had a trip planned and I was pretty sure that when I would come back, I wouldn't work on it anymore. That I, it, I was pretty much abandoning the painting at this point. But two weeks later, when I came back into my studio and the painting was just staring at me in the corner of the room, I guess I saw it in a new light because it didn't look as bad as I decided in my mind that it was. And the issues in the painting just became so apparent to me that I felt like I could just go in and then directly address those issues and then maybe this painting still has a chance. Maybe I was being dramatic and maybe this is not that bad after all. And Maybe I just need to loosen up a bit. So what I noticed about the colors of the piece when I came back, I noticed that I was using very saturated colors all over the place. And I was using very saturated cool colors as well as very saturated warm colors. All of it at once to the same like degree of intensity was clashing. I needed to first pick like the primary uh, focal color that I wanted the piece to be based around. Then I needed to tone down the intensity, the saturation of the other colors so that there's a bit more color harmony. And once I started knocking down some of these really strong cool colors, 
as well as some very warm colors that didn't need to be quite so saturated. The colors just felt a lot more cohesive and it started to look more appealing to me and I started to like it more. So once I got to a place where the colors were finally starting to meld together and not compete with each other but be supportive of each other and when I fixed the dolls on top of the shelf and I fixed the cat's face, my attitude towards the painting just completely shifted and I was just seeing so much more potential with it. I was getting excited about it again. Thinking back to that time when I was struggling so hard with this painting, I had a lot of pressure to perform and to do really well on this piece because I hadn't done a fully finished illustration in quite a long time and also because I had shared a lot of the um, progress of the piece and it had gotten a very positive reaction from um, you guys and on Instagram. I put a ton of pressure on myself to do the best painting that I could possibly make. And on top of that, um, because I wasn't making a ton of artwork in the months leading up to this point, I wasn't making a lot of money. Um, I was actually spending a lot of money making new products and it was just a time where I was spending a lot of money but not a lot of money was coming in. So it was a really stressful time and I think I put a lot more pressure on myself to perform and just so much was at stake with this piece that I just kind of set myself up for failure. I feel like I was not in the healthiest mindset, which is so ironic and it's it's so it's the antithesis of what um, I was trying to achieve with the painting, what what this painting was even inspired by in the first place. At a certain point when the frustrations and the struggles started to settle in, I was not painting it from a place of joy, but this place of, ooh, I gotta get this done before I leave for my trip, and ooh, I gotta do a really good job so people will like it, and I can't disappoint all the people that liked the planning stage, you know, to show up with a substandard painting, that would be really anticlimactic. I gotta do my best work here. I, I started to feel genuinely very angry at myself. I know that sounds dramatic, but I haven't had instances where I felt just so emotional towards a piece, like short of just screaming at the painting. <laughs> I feel like on camera, it's really hard to capture my frustration as I'm painting because everything is sped up and you don't hear me just like yelling and screaming at the painting. I put so much pressure on myself and when I didn't deliver, in my eyes, when I didn't deliver, it was just such a disappointment and the added pressure of um, the like the financial aspect of it, of, of not being able to have a painting that I'd be proud to have prints of, that was stressful. Knowing that I had just invested all this time, all the past few weeks leading up to that point, trying to build up to this finale, I guess, of this great painting, and seeing that slowly slip away as I am just sitting there, hours and hours going by while I wrestle with it and seemingly just cannot make it better. I was so back and forth with this painting, even after I had made the decision to go ahead and pick it back up again, I just hated it one moment and then liked it the next for a split second and then hated it again and I really took a lot from this experience. I Learning how volatile my emotions can be when I'm going through the emotions of a painting. It's definitely not good. I I recognize that that is not a good thing, but I'm just trying to illustrate to you guys what kind of state my mind was in when I am just grappling with this piece. So by this point in the painting, I was feeling ready to finally tackle the details of the artwork around the cat and the paintings on the wall. 
I leave these kinds of details last because I feel like it would be the easiest to paint them um, on top of a solid foundation as opposed to painting them and then having to possibly go over them and then paint them again. But sometimes I wish I could go in with these details earlier on because I feel like they really help tie the piece together. I spent so much of the time painting this to build up that solid foundation where I could go in and add the magic, I guess. And sometimes it's easy to convince myself that there's not a lot of life to the painting and it's boring or it doesn't really have a story to it. But it's those little details like what does she paint and what's on her walls and what does that say about her and what do the um, artifacts found in a room say about the paintings. It's little details like that that tell a story about the piece. What is the cat painting? Oh, he's painting a lot of pictures of himself. Must be a little bit of a narcissist. It's that little bit of humor injected into it. I think that really makes a piece. I really needed to make sure that that sense of playfulness and magic really comes through when she's painting and so to give her painting arm a sense of movement I painted little globs of paint going out in a um, line of action from her hand hoping that that line of action will draw our eyes around the painting and then toward her hand and then ultimately to her face and to make the top part of the painting feel really magical and to really suggest that perhaps the dolls and the paintings on the wall are possibly coming to life, um, I needed to portray that sense of magic. And by putting in little twinkly dots, um, it mimics the look of uh, firefly lights as well. It's also meant to mimic the look of stars. And by varying up the colors of each of the little um, dots that I was putting in. I really felt like this accented all the colors of the piece. You know, the pinks, the orange, the yellow, and the blue echo some of the other colors used in the painting, which make it feel more cohesive. And with that, I felt the painting was finished. Or at least I thought it was. I signed it, and I took the ugly blue painter's tape off the painting which you know probably definitely contributed to my dislike of the painting earlier on because that blue is so bright and is so distracting from the painting i can definitely see how seeing that blue all the time when i was painting um mess with my head in thinking that that blue was in the painting itself when I finally took the tape off, the painting just instantly looked better to me. But despite that, something still felt missing. This piece is called Happy Mess, but it didn't feel messy enough. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff in the composition, but is it really messy? I don't think it is. So even though I was so scared of making just the wrong move and potentially having to repaint a whole area again, I went back in and added some drippy paint blobs on her canvas that she's working on and more spilled paint on the cast canvas as well as more um, paw prints. And even though it's still subtle, I didn't go crazy with it. I feel like it adds so much to the piece. The canvas she's working on doesn't just look like a white square in the middle of the composition anymore. There's a bit more to it there. There's life, there's dripping paint. It's in use, it's not just a static thing anymore. Same for the cat's canvas, there's paint spilling over it, there's life to it now. It just feels a lot more interactive. And finally, by this point, I really felt like the painting was complete. There's nothing more that I can do. Well, there's, there's always something more that I can do, but I'm happy with it. 
feel like all the elements in the piece have been accounted for. They have a sense of context, they have a sense of belonging there, they are related to each other through the colors or the lighting or the eye contact or the eye movement throughout the piece connecting everything together. It all clicks for me now and it feels complete, so I was happy to call it finished. I can't believe that I've been dealing with this painting for the last three months. It's embarrassing for me to say that. It's a big insecurity of mine that I take forever to finish my paintings. I don't even know if it's possible for me to start a painting and then finish it within a day. I don't know if that's possible for me because what I love to do when I'm painting is to really flesh something out and just give it so much life to it I guess and make it feel tangible and give it so much of my attention and care that's my favorite part of painting as much as I like to complain about parts of my process that um, are difficult and time-consuming what I love about painting is putting in that time to just carefully craft a picture together even though I would have liked to have finished this painting three months ago, I'm really happy that I stuck through it. I'm thrilled with the end results and I'm happier still that I can finally share this with you guys because I know a lot of you have been very patiently waiting for this video. When I would post the little progress shots on Instagram, you guys were really supportive and saying you believe in me and that I can do it, I've got this. It was really nice and I'm just really happy that I can share the final chapter of this story with you guys. And I'm also happy to say that Happy Mess is now available as a limited edition print on my online shop. They will come in two sizes, one being the standard US letter size and the other being the large size which is 13 by 19 inches. The prints came out really beautifully and I'm really proud to make them available for you guys. If you really like this piece, then do consider picking up a print before they are all gone. It really helps support me as well as my channel. And speaking of supporting this channel, I would like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this conclusion to this painting saga that dragged on for way too long. And I look forward to growing my Patreon and looking forward to tackling new paintings. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!